I didn't have so, Dwayne so, Wade and Kobe so Bryant carry me up and down the court. So why are you not on the Hall of Fame? I got three finals MVP, because, because, Chuck. Because you, you, Google because me, Chuck. Got, everybody, everybody Google me, you Chuck. Great you player. see that? Everybody Google me. You a great Shaq. Ah, the greatest in the universe. Sorry, we were quoting him there. Shaq is by and large one of the biggest personalities in the history of the NBA during his career. So allow us to show you seven times where Shaq seriously dissed NBA players. Be sure to like the video and subscribe to the channel. Number seven, Kobe Bryant. The day Kobe gave my respect was the guys were complaining. I said, Shaq, Kobe's not passing the ball. I said, I'll talk to him. I said, Kobe, there's no I in team. And Kobe said, I know, but there's an M.E. in that motherfucker. You cannot do a list about Shaq insulting people without bringing up the biggest feud in his career. No, not with JaVale McGee, his long eternal rivalry with the late great Kobe Bryant. It hurts to talk about it, no doubt, but hey, it needs to be said. Despite how the story is sometimes told, these two did not start out playing together. Shaq was first a part of the Magic, but eventually got traded to the Lakers to help a young Kobe Bryant bring the Lakers to the next level, which is exactly what they did. After some standard growing pains, the two were the dominant duo in the NBA. Kobe put out shots on the outside, and Shaq was the big man, posting up and making dunks. They won three NBA titles together in four seasons, and Shaq was the MVP of the league in the finals when that happened. And that's when Kobe got petty. Kobe was the kind of guy who demanded that the spotlight be on him and all the big game talk be about him and not anyone else. The two got into a major internal war that could not be fixed, so Shaq was traded. But their battle continued on, and Shaq got more and more verbal and intense in his strikes against Kobe. Including after he got his fourth ring and Kobe struggled, he did a diss track stating, Kobe couldn't do it without me, and asked him what his butt tastes like. The two had it so heated that the last time they really talked was years before when Shaq and Kobe won co-MVP at the NBA All-Star Game. After Kobe died, Shaq was one of the most heartbroken people as he knew they wouldn't get the chance to make amends, and reality hit him hard. The man he used to be the best in the league with was gone. No doubt Shaq regrets all the things he said about Kobe, and that further shows that life isn't meant to have feuds as it can end before they're resolved. Number 6. JaVale McGee NBA fans are extremely familiar with Shaquille O'Neal's segment on Inside the NBA, Shaq and a Fool, where he pretty much pokes fun at ridiculous NBA moments in the league. Now, if you're very familiar with this segment, you'd understand that JaVale McGee is a regular, and if not, the reason why this series gained notoriety to begin with with all the silly plays he made. During his early days of being an NBA commentator on TNT, Shaq would go after various NBA players to try and get them to bring up their game, and one of the constant punching bags was that of JaVale McGee. Now, in case you're curious, Shaq had a very good reason for going after JaVale, as he was constantly not living up to his potential or flopping in order to try and get calls. So thus, Shaq ribbed him constantly. Then when he went to the Warriors and started playing well, Shaq backed off as you would expect. But then he started making typical mistakes again, and so Shaq went after him which led to McGee calling him out on Twitter and Shaq going nuts and dissing him and even saying that he'd beat him down if JaVale didn't shut up. It was so bad that both Kevin Durant and Shaq's mom had to get involved in this. For real. Shaq promised to let it go because he didn't want to upset his mom anymore. You see that, McGee? You only get saved because Shaq's mom came and bailed you out. Number 5. Yao Ming and even after showing up to a foreign land, adjusting to the NBA's physicality and pace, and dominating in so many games that he made the all-star team as a rookie and was in the running for rookie of the year, Yao still wasn't getting the respect he deserved, especially from the league's most imposing big man. The big man's big man, Shaquille O'Neal. When Shaq was in the league, especially in his prime, he was the most dominant big man on the planet. He was boss, but then the Houston Rockets drafted China player Yao Ming, who was bigger than Shaq, ironically enough, and was slated to be a worthy foe for him. Shaq didn't take too kindly to that, and in fact he was so mad at it, he started to call out Yao Ming both on the court and off to make it clear that there was only one dominant center in the league, and that was him, no one else. Things got very intense every time they played, but it would be Yao who got the first backhand, if you will, as during their first game together, he blocked multiple shots from Shaq and even scored more points than him. Now, yes, yeah, Shaq won the war because he is much more revered than Yao Ming, but this was a case where his antics honestly made him look like a fool. Number four, Rudy Gobert. Hey, 
if I'm Boogie, I'm looking at that. I'm looking at that BS contract that your boy from Utah just got. Oh yeah, what do you think about that oh, contract, yeah, Rudy? I mean, he got two hundred yeah, million, Shaq. Two hundred. I'm, I'm not going to hate, but this should be an inspiration to all the little kids out there. If you average eleven points in the NBA, you can get two hundred. <laughs> Rudy Gilbert is widely praised as one of the best in the league in terms of defending. In fact, he's a former Defensive Player of the Year. But a few years back, he was snubbed from the All-Star game. Everyone agreed he should have been on the team, and when Gilbert found out he was snubbed, he cried on camera. Shaq didn't like this for one reason or another, and in an interview told Rudy, there's no crying in basketball, Rudy. Man up. Put some icy hot on your face. The feud died down, but then Gilbert got a massive new contract worth $205 million. And Shaq didn't like that at all. He went on to a podcast and noted that Rudy should serve as an inspiration to little kids because you can average 11 points in the NBA and get $200 million. Then he went on to his Instagram page and noted that he would have not only dumped on Gobert, which he put a picture of proving the fact, but that he would have gotten way better stats than him. Now to be clear, Rudy Gobert is a really good player and Shaq might have stretched things a bit, but as you can see, when Shaq gets very motivated on something, he doesn't go softly into things. He goes full tilt. Number three, Damian Lillard. Be him as Shaq, like a big star, and not as just an artist, which I, I still think is true. Uh, and that was like no offense to him, but he was offended by it and he dissed me, so. This one is honestly really funny. You see, there have been times when NBA stars like Shaq have gone on to use their skills to do things like music. And in recent time, Damian Lillard did just that. And while on a podcast, he was asked about whether his rap skills were better than Shaq's, which he said they were. This got Shaq to do not just a response, but a rap style diss track on Lillard, pointing out a lot of the flaws in his logic, his skills, and his rank in the NBA. Lillard also fired back and called out Shaq's age, platinum status, and more. So who won the battle or war? Well, it's obviously up to you, but this is something that is funny because as we've shown, social media or the court is usually where NBA beefs get resolved. And yet, they did this in a rap battle. Number two, Scotty Pippen. Agreed, obviously, except, you know, Scotty. Um, do you, you really, Think he's a bum? I mean, he he was pretty good in his career. I, yeah, I mean, pretty good. Hey. Not good enough. <laughs> not good. Oh yes, it is time for a legend to enter the fray and battle our man of honor. It's time for Scottie Pippen versus Shaq. These two did play against each other in the latter parts of Scottie's career, and their beef wasn't from there per se. However, in 2015, Shaq posted an image of who he felt were the best Lakers and the best Bulls, five versus five, and said that he felt the Lakers would win by 50 and asked people to give their thoughts on this. And oh, Scotty had thoughts, because instead of answering the question, he posted a pic of him and Michael Jordan noting that we won six titles, twice what you claimed in LA. Shaq went on to the Dan Patrick show and called Scotty Pippen a great player, but always under me. Pippen fired back with a reminder of the rings that he got, to which Shaq fired back himself with a picture of Scotty's face on a fiddle, saying that he was only winning because of Jordan, and that he was second fiddle to him and second fiddle to me. Scotty is criminally underrated at times and never got all the fame, attention, or even money because of his playing with Michael Jordan. Would that all-star LA team beat the all-star Bulls team by 50? Not likely, but hey, don't say that to Shaq. Number one, Dwight Howard. Everybody out there, don't ever give up on you. Give up on your dreams. Keep fucking doing. I swear, just keep fighting. I swear to God, don't ever give up on yourself. You know what I don't like as a player, though? What's that? So a lot of players on their little Instagram bragging like they were the reason they got the championship. I ain't going to say no names. There was a lot of that going on. I, I ain't going to say no names. I, you don't you have to. You yeah. don't have to. Sit you your don't... ass down. You didn't do nothing. Stop it. But I already know well, who you're talking about. You know it, too. I know you know who I'm talking about. Stop it. There front were, runner. By the way. Uh, Bandwagon jumper. Stop <laughs> it. Oh. Stop it. Don't be talking to me like you know players. Sit your ass down. Dwight Howard was also drafted to the Orlando Magic, and many felt that he would be the next Shaq, and for a time, he did live up to that potential, even taking the Magic to the NBA Finals like Shaq did, and they both lost there for the record. And if you know what happened to Dwight in terms of his career, you'll know that he followed many of the same paths that Shaq did, including going from the Magic to the Lakers, being called Superman, and so on. Shaq refused to acknowledge his skills even during his peak playing days. And when he got his second chance with the Lakers and won the title with them, Shaq was asked about the signing. He said, I don't know him. Yep, that right there is a burn. So what do you think? What do you think of this look at the time that Shaq went and dissed NBA players and might have gone a little too far in the process? 
Which of the talents that he went after did you not see coming? Are you shocked that he went after legends as well as players that he felt weren't living up to their potential? Do you think that he still has some big disses left in him? Let us know in the comments below. Be sure to subscribe and we will see you next time on the channel.